Good afternoon and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 3rd of February 2020 and the time has just gone 12.09 GMT. And it's, you've seen a bit of a rebound in European stock markets, but um, it is worth noting overnight uh, we had major declines in mainland China. Uh, stock markets in mainland China, uh, it was their first uh, day's trading uh, since the, uh, after the Lunar New Year celebration. So while we saw heavy selling in, the, in Europe and European and US markets and some Asian markets last week, mainland China, the kind of the epicenter uh, of the coronavirus crisis, uh, was remained closed. So there was enormous selling pressure um, on mainland Chinese stocks overnight. Some of the indis some of the markets, such as the you know, Shanghai Composite and the likes, um, opened roughly eight percent lower. Um, the People's Bank of China, the Chinese Central Bank, were fairly quick to try and stabilize the, the situation, uh, and they quickly announced a a, um, a liquidity injection as a way of kind of calming the markets down. It did a, a small bit. Um, stocks in mainland China, broadly speaking. Were only down about seven percent rather than the kind of over eight. Uh, so there, there was a bit of stability brought, but nonetheless, um, it was essentially all the kind of panic and, and fear and frustration that was built into the into the into the, into the stocks while the market was closed. Um, so with that, uh, because Chinese stocks, we've had intervention from the people from the Chinese Central Bank, stocks were off the lows of the session, down heavy heavy heavily. Nonetheless, we have seen a bit of a rebound here in Europe. Keep in mind we had a pretty negative finish to the European and the U US trading session on Friday just gone. So we're seeing a small bit of a rebound in Europe European stocks. You know it is worth noting that you know that the, the, the gains you've made today are very small in comparison to the losses that we racked up at the back end of last week. It could be a bit of profit take, sorry, it could be a bit of bargain hunting, it could be a bit of, sh of short covering, but nonetheless uh, it, it, the size of the gains are relatively small in comparison to the losses incurred, which suggests that there isn't a huge amount of bearer sentiment. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I also just want, want, want to kind of map out what, what the plan for the video is. I'll talk about a couple more topics of, of, of interest in the last day or so. Then I'll look at the week ahead article and then I'll take a look at the major charts. Um, also in the news today, a lot of volatility in the British pound. Uh, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson basically said said to uh, to the European Union, um, if you're going to, you know, he it, said it essentially said he would consider walking away from, from discussions and trade talks if the European Union insists that the UK uh, stays aligned and f effectively follows EU rules after the transition period ends. So traders on the back of that are fearful that opens up the possibility of a no deal Brexit scenario after the transition period ends. And with that, we've seen a fairly sizable sell-off in the British pound. Um, it's down nine tenths of one percent against the US dollar. Um, Euro sterling uh, is up uh, near, you know, over six tenths of one percent. So we've seen a big move, move to the downside in the British pound on the back of that. There has been some stability returned to the oil market. Oil took a massive, took a battering heavily recently, given uh, that China is the largest importer of the energy in the world. OPEC plus. Have come out and said they would consider just consider um, cutting production by a, a further eight, 500,000 barrels per day as a way. Well, you know, if this is a measure of just stabilizing the price and you know the 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 the, 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 um, the change in the day both WTI and Brent are particularly vague in comparison to what's been recently. So that's brought about some stability. Uh, let's take a look at the week ahead article. Now the week the week ahead article can be found on our website. CMCMarkets.com under insights you'll find the news and analysis section and if you scroll down here you can see that uh, tonight Monday we have Alphabet they're the parent company of Google they will have four to four to figures out tonight um, we've already had some of these figures in relation to um, in relation to China uh, in relation we're gonna have the, uh, the services figures coming out on Wednesday uh, we also have the final reading of, of many service reports coming from the UK, major Eurozone economies, and the US. They'll be, they'll be published on Wednesday because we've already had the, uh, the manufacturing ones released um, this morning. The Reserve Bank of Australia, they will, ha they will have a, uh, their interest rate decision tomorrow, in the early hours of tomorrow. 
the anticipation is that no change will be made to the interest rate cut to the interest rates rather. Uh, on Tuesday we have fourth quarter figures out from fourth for, for the fourth, fourth quarter figures from BP. On Wednesday we have first half numbers from Fire Developments. On Thursday we have fourth quarter numbers from both Twitter and Uber. And looking towards the back end of the week, the all important US non farm payroll support. That's likely to be the most important economic update of the entire week. And we also have a, an update, the jobs update from Canada. So what I'm now going to do is to take a quick look at some of the major indices to, to begin with. I'll go through the indices, I'll go through a couple of currency pairs, and then finish it off with some commodities. So last week on Friday, major day of selling on the FTSE, fell to a seven week low. We've seen a bit of a bounce back today. The sentiment is clearly is clearly bearish. We're, you know, we're, while we hold below the red line here, the currently moving average at 7,364, it's likely we could see further losses. And should that be the case, we could look at targeting 7,200 or potentially this area here, 7,132. We'd really need to be getting back above the 50 moving average, this blue line here, in a 7,466, or even up as far as the 7,000. 500 zone before we can then begin to, be, begin to think that the recent downward trend has come to an end But like I said for the time being the sentiment continues to look uh, fairly negative uh, On Friday the tax fell to its lowest level in a month or so or maybe about three three and a half weeks So it's not as bad as the uh, the foot 200 but notice how it found decent enough support from this zone here in around 12,900 that area has acted as previous year's consolidation and a bit of support. If we can continue to hold above that in the near term, we could see the market potentially have a bit regain um, some of the some of the ground that was continue to regain some of the ground that was lost on Friday. But you know the, the trend for the last few weeks has clearly been has clearly been negative. So if we do have a size of break below uh, twelve thousand nine hundred, it could take us back to this zone here, down around twelve thousand six hundred and sixty. If we do look to kind of rebound from from the uh, from Friday's low, we could look ahead back towards thirty thousand two hundred, or perhaps this blue line here, thirty the fifty the fifty moving average in a thirteen thousand two hundred and seventy four. Now the U uh, the U S markets are in better shape than their uh, European counterparts, but the U S markets for for a good portion of last week were fairly slow. To actually feel the feel the pain uh, of the coronavirus crisis, except for on Friday when we had a major day of selling, and you can see here that the the Dow Jones actually closed well below its 50-day moving average, and it hasn't done that for quite some time. So you're giving an indication of how bearish sentiment is. Now it would it would appear that we're going to have a rebound uh, today, but keep you know, keep in mind that the trend for the last couple of weeks has been fairly bearish. So if if the if they get a more recent bearish trend. Those those uh, take hold, continue to take hold. We could be looking at retesting this area here at around 28,000. It's a big psychological number. Uh, but if you do have a bit of a rebound in the near term and we get back above the 50 moving average, we could look to head up towards 28,800 or potentially 28,930. It's a fairly similar position picture rather when we look at the S&P 500. Major sell off on Friday. In fact, it pretty much almost bounced off its 50 day moving average, this blue line along here. So, even though the sentiment in the near term has is 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 negative, that there's no doubt about that. If we could just have a hold above Friday's low, we can hold above the 50 day moving average, we could look at heading back up towards um, 3,250. And if we go beyond that, we could potentially look at targeting this zone 3,300. Um, but if we know the market might look to kind of rally towards those areas before potentially turning lower again. Should that be the case, if you take out Friday's low, it could take us back down towards 3,200 or down towards 3,180. I talked about how there's a major move to the downside in the British pound this morning. So we can see here that broadly speaking, since since uh, Christmas Eve on, we've seen a Broadly speaking, move higher in the uh, in the British pound versus the US dollar, and then of course today we had a fairly sizable sell-off. Now we're pretty much 
on this blue line here, the 50 day moving average. So you can see that while we hold above this trend line here, the, the lows from late December to the lows of um of mid to mid 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 um mid to late January. If we could hold above that, it's likely we continue to press on higher from here. But uh, keep in mind we had a pretty pretty decent slide, we're pretty much trading on the 50 day moving average. So this could be kind of a, 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 a an important level to keep an eye on. So if you can hold above the 50 moving average, we could look at retesting the 132 zone. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at testing the late December high in at one spot, 3284. If on the downside, we continue to move lower from here, support could be found from this area, from this trend line here, which comes into play in around one spot, 30. It's a big psychological number. <coughs> Excuse me. So that could, could, could uh, make it, it's likely to make it even more important because you got a couple of key Key, uh, price, key, key price points coming together, converging a psychological number and a trend line. That could, uh, it's likely to make that, that point um, more important should it be retested. Uh, so we could see support coming to play in around the 130 zone, but if you have a break below that, we could be heading, heading back down towards the 1 spot 29 area. Let's take a look at Euro dollar now. To be honest, Euro dollar has been fairly boring the last um, the last few months. Uh, go, starting from late December going forward, we can see here that it's been in a downward trend, a lower low, a lower high, a lower low, and what could be a lower high, depending on how things pan out. So, what it, so we, we've seen the lower low and lower high, and we've seen a found decent support in this area here. You know, coincides with the big number of you know 110, but we're still below. The 50 day moving average, the blue line, and the red line, the 200 day moving average. So it seems to me that, that, the, that the market is still in that kind of bearish trend. We really need to get back above those moving averages, the 50 and the 200, before we could begin to think the market's shaking off the recent negative trend. So if we do push in higher from here, we, we could be looking at targeting one spot 11.72, and a move beyond that could take us up to, to the highs that we saw in late December. But if the market remains in the kind of downward trend, it could be a case of that it presses on higher only to turn lower yet again. And if you do have a fairly decent break below 110, that could bring 109 into play or even south of that down towards one spot 0879. I'll take a look at what's going on on the gold market. So I talked about how a lot of money in the last few sessions in Europe and the US uh, and indeed China overnight money's been flying out of stocks and it's been going into you know assets that are deemed to be safe haven safe havens such as gold so you can see here how uh, the gold uh, in the overnight session hit, it, hit its highest level since early January this here was on the back of the heightened US Iran tensions so giving an indication of how uh, how negative sentiment is and how, how, how much traders are in risk off mode if they're kind of driving the um, driving up the gold market to levels um, last seen around the time that it looked like the, you know the US and the Iranian regime were potentially on the cusp of war. So the market's been pressing higher um, for, the last, for the last month or so. It's in a fairly solid upward trend. If we continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the psychology important $1,600. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the highs of January in around 1611. Um, buying of the dip has been a popular strategy with traders in the last few weeks and even indeed uh, the last few months. So if we do see any moves to the downside, support can be found in this zone here down around 15.62. And even if you go below that, support can be found from this area here down around 15.36. So it's uh, 15.62 and 15.36, potential areas of support for the gold market. Now I mentioned how, um, how oil... I had a pretty bad run of it recently. We can see here, and in early January, this is how this is when the oil market spiked on the back of the U.S. Iran tensions. Then there was the de-escalation of tensions. So we saw the subsequent uh, move, the lower low, a lower high, and an aggressive lower low. Uh, so we've been moving sharply lower on the oil market uh, in the last in the last few sessions. We can see a bit of stability coming into, into play here. We can see it's not, not, not actually a major surprise. We see a bit of a turnaround, a bit of a bounce. We saw some buyers coming to the fold down around this level here in around 56 spot 71. You know, you can see here that it coincides with a couple of areas of, of, uh, of support 
uh, going back some time. If you can hold above, um, if you can hold above the session lows, we could look at snapping back and making maintaining some ground. We could look at heading back towards up towards 59 spot 60 or the important psychological 60 bucks a bar level. But you know, make no mistake, the sentiment is clearly to the downside. So if we take out the if we take out the lows, the lows uh, of today, it would kind of pave the way potentially for the likes of 54 to be retested. That is on Brent Oil. I'll take a look at WTI. Similar scenario here. You've got the lower low, the lower high, and another lower low. Granted, you know this so far. This uh, this candle is showing uh, a positive. It is showing a positive sign. So we are seeing. We have seen a bit of a turnaround. Once again, the uh, that metric um, proved significant in the past. You can see here in around 50 spot 36. If you, can, if you can hold above that level, we might stand a chance of heading back up towards where this gap was created on the 23rd of January in around. $54 a barrel, maybe just north of it, uh, in, in there, thereabouts. Um, but if you do, we could so potentially bounce back up towards there. But keep in mind, sentiment for the last few weeks has been quite negative. So we could be looking head back towards the recent lows, followed by potentially $50 a barrel. And if you break below 50, it could point the way down, down towards 49, 48, so on and so forth. Now, uh, I, do, I do also want to do a quick mention in relation to the, uh, the non farm payrolls report. Um, we'll, we'll be holding a webinar for that event um, on Friday. You can sign up for it on our website. You can see here non farm payrolls Friday the 7th, 2020, and the time is 15. Sorry, apologies, apologies. The time is 13:15 GMT, so it'll be quarter past one UK time. The numbers come out at 13:30 GMT, so please feel free to sign up for that. And that is the end of this video. Uh, so thank you for listening. Have a good trading week and good luck.